Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Outside the Cinema, your weekly source for cult movie and future cult movie discussion. This week on the episode, yeah. Bill and Chris will take a look at Halloween Ends, the new final offering in the Halloween series. And also, Dario Argento's Dark Glasses. Can the Master of Horror return to form? Answer, no. Also, I think we need to stop with this Master of Horror shit. <laughs> I will... We have it. We can we can make an argument uh, on on Argento when we get to him because we talked to him on him a couple weeks ago and it was really kind of weird that that we had mentioned Dark Glasses on that episode when we were talking about whatever it was. What the hell was the movie? That's how bad it was. I already can't even remember. It was the one where he wanted to fuck his daughter. That's I mean that's all of them except for the new one. I know, I know. Shit, what the hell was it? It wasn't Stendhal. No. I- Fucking, you're going to make me open IMDb. No, we should be able to remember that. This is how much I didn't like it. See, I just erased shit from my mind. I just didn't care, man. That's the thing. And we all know I love me some Italian horror. All right, let me see. Halloween and Star Glasses, Werewolf, Land of the Lost, Dahmer. No, none of that. None of that. It was, uh, did I not fucking, A Record of Sweet Murder? Was that him? No. Nope. Superstition? Did I fucking forget to put it it on my list? No, it wasn't Superstition. Um, Record of Street Murder was the the found footage. <laughs> I can't one. fucking remember wow, now. This is unbelievable. We're the worst, man. Why? How do we still do this? It's we do it because you're like, okay, I'm ready to go. I'm like, okay. Um, was it further back than I thought it was? Trauma. Dario Argento's trauma. Oh, it was back further than yeah. I thought it was. Okay, so let me, that if I good. scroll a little bit more here. It was the same week we did I, Borgman. No, we did the Children's Hour with Borgman, It was the week before we? we did Borgman and the Children's Hour then. <laughs> yes, it is. Things and trauma. Things and trauma. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Trauma. Uh, also, yeah. Uh, I've been drinking this. I, I, I'm a big fan now of, of, of the Mountain Dew and the like <laughs> random Mountain Dew flavors that kind of just pop out. This one okay. is the Mountain Dew Spark, which is a dew with a blast of raspberry lemonade. It's quite good. Huh. Uh, the Halloween one they did was called Voodoo, oh, and it was Jesus. a mystery flavor. Uh, good and, for them. And it was definitely uh, blood orange. Ah, uh, okay. I've come to this realization recently, though, Chris, uh, that yeah. I, I, I love snacks. And I'm proud yep. of it, and I love fast food, and I'm proud of it, and I don't care mm. any anymore what people think of me. Yeah. <laughs> like, I love yeah. all that shit. Like, hey, what is your go to McDonald's order currently? Uh, number three. Number three, which is the which is what? Uh, you should remember what it is. <laughs> no, I don't need to remember because I know the number. What is it? A uh, uh, fuck! I gotta look it up. Hold on. We'll all wait. Thank you. You're welcome. And number three is, uh, no, that's the fucking breakfast menu. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> it's it's a burger. I okay. know that. Okay. All right. That's part of it. Oh, it's the, it's the quarter pounder. With, is it the qu- double quarter pounder? I don't fucking know. It's, well. My go-to order. Go ahead. What's yours? My go-to order is the double quarter pounder with cheese. Add bacon. Oh, okay. Large. Okay. We do. We go large. You can supersize yep. me. I don't fucking care. And I get the sweet tea with it. Ah. Uh, and okay. I don't care, dude. I don't eat McDonald's a lot. Don't get me wrong. Like I don't eat McDonald's a lot. But like you know what? Sometimes when you just like are real fucking lazy, you can order that shit up yeah. on Uber Eats and spend three times what it actually costs. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah yeah i would basically get it at the 24 hour one uh when i was at gbh when i would be coming home and i'm, I'm like i'm so tired i don't want to make anything when i get home yeah it was like the only thing open probably too right it was yeah. it was so then i would get a 20 piece nugget um and split that with the dogs um and sometimes we'd get lucky and they'd throw an extra nugget in mm. so each dog could then get could get seven. When I'm feeling really fancy, I go with the, the with the fillet of fish. I like a fillet of fish but every now and then. Some of the McDonald's dude will do the double fillet of fish. 
Oh. You can order a double filet of fish and you get two pieces of fish in there. I get rid of that tartar sauce. Get huh. the fucking tartar sauce out of here. Mayo and ketchup together. Boom. Oh, okay. So special sauce. Uh, essentially, yeah. That's basically mayo chip. Special is sauce what, yeah. is what it is. What it is. What it's fondly yeah. called. Yeah. Well, yeah. I don't know. I was thinking about it the other day, and I'm just like, you know what, man? McDonald's. When you're hungry, it's all right. It's yeah, yeah. It's enough to to sustain you to the next day. Yeah, especially since I coach so much baseball. <laughs> like, mm. I wish that I could come home and like make dinner and be like, yeah, right. cool. But like. <clears throat> I'll get, we'll, we'll, we'll go down and practice. We'll practice for an hour, and then we'll have like a, a two-hour scrimmage, and then it's like 6.30, 7 o'clock, and I'm like, I'm not yeah. fucking cooking. Let's just order. Let's just order something, and we usually yeah. end up with McDonald's because it always comes quickly on Uber Eats. Like, by the time I'm done taking uh, my shower, like, it's already here. Well, it's. I mean, it is the fastest of the fast. Right, and there's one not that far, and I could drive there, and <coughs> I will drive there sometimes, because honestly, mm. food app orders, obviously, highly, highly robbing you in so many different ways. Yeah. But sometimes the yeah. convenience of just being able to not have, literally, you don't have to fucking talk to one single person. <laughs> you customize your order exactly. I have less orders screwed up through Uber Eats and Grubhub. Mm-hmm. Then I have like when I go somewhere and I'm just like, hey, bro. Okay. No pickles, no onions. You know what yeah, I always no get? No lettuce too for you. I know. <laughs> you know what yeah. I get? <laughs> Extra pickles, <laughs> double onions. <laughs> and I'm like, that's that's not what that's I the ordered. opposite of what you yeah. were asking for. And there'll be like no ketchup on it. There'll be like one random thing missing. Uh, I get double the stuff I don't a, want, and they a... take away 100 percent of the stuff I do want. There's a place down the street from us that does a uh, bacon cheeseburger calzone. Oh, that and sounds fucking every time, scrumptious. It, it is. But every time I order it, they seem to get confused when I say no ketchup and no lettuce because they put lettuce in it. Ugh. And in I, it? I, let me tell you. In it? Like, yeah. yeah. No, lettuce is not a food that you <laughs> cook. No, and neither neither is, uh, as far as I'm concerned, ketchup. I don't, no, I don't like. Condiments I don't are not like, included um, in the cooking process. No, I don't like a ketchup glazed meatloaf. That's never been a favorite thing of mine. Okay, I no, I have mixed it into the meatloaf. That's different. That's different. Like that's not, different because like, you can mix mustard and and mm-hmm. sour cream and all kinds of stuff into into stuff. But like just as a condiment, like if I if I'm gonna put ketchup on something, I want to do it to the level that the food deserves. Right, your ketchup you shouldn't know? be coming at you hot. Right, it should heat up not. Uh, when being placed upon top something, but like yeah. it shouldn't be coming at you hot. Right. Oddly enough, though, I'm okay with with mustard being warm because it's I don't know. I would it's, still it's prefer it to be. I would still prefer it to be cool, but I think I'm less on the side of mustard. Yeah. But like mayo, bro, mayo is coming in cold. Oh, absolutely. Mayo's got to come yeah. in cold. Yeah. Barbecue sauce can come in hot. Oh, the only time you can do it is if you spread a thin layer. Of mayonnaise on a on a hot dog or or a um or a hamburger bun, and then you grill it a little bit. Oh, see, that's different. So though. it kind of crisps up. Well, that's when I right, make. You're using that as a medium to get to somewhere. You're yeah. not when I eating make... a glob of the topping. Right, exactly. When I make um grilled cheese sandwiches, a lot of times I will coat mm. the outside of the the bread with with mayo and then put it in the oh. pan because it browns and crisps itself up better. Okay, I just I just use a shitload of butter because I don't care about my health. Well, I mean, I don't I don't do. We just talked about we each get, order a double quarter pounder with cheese. Yeah, as our yeah. McDonald's meal. Do I sound like I really care about my health? That's that's a, that's a good point. That's Crazy. A, well, you do, you do to a certain point. I mean, I mean, it's fine. Eat what you enjoy, but um, don't kill yourself with it. Obviously, <laughs> exactly. Yes, moderation. Yeah. Also, get up and take a walk once in a while. That's all you got to do. All yeah, right. Yeah. Uh, uh, fast food aside. Because we don't want to talk about the movies. We're going to talk about Halloween candy well, now. I kind of, I kind of, we, I was like, well, I mentioned something here at the top because I think one of these movies we can talk about, but the other we're not going to really, we're not going to get much out of. Um, so this <laughs> week on the show, we are covering Halloween Ends, which is the the, the final installment of the new, yeah. um, was it Goyer? Is it Goyer that did it? No, not Goyer. Green. Uh, Green. Green's. Green. Uh, Halloween trilogy, and then Dario Argento's Dark Glasses, which is the first new Argento film in a number of years. Uh, Halloween ends. You can see it in theaters currently. It's also streaming on Peacock. 
and Dark Glasses yep. is streaming exclusively on Shutter. Yes. So I think we should probably probably start with Halloween ends, right? Sure. All right. I've got That's I do fine. have a trailer here. Uh I'm gonna play it. Let's see what happens. Am I playing it? I don't even know. What is going on here? That was no, that was that was just straight up weird. <laughs> What happened? I don't know. Like everything I checked before we went on the air, and everything, <clears throat> everything is working the way it's supposed to. Right until uh, you need it to work. Yeah, right. I don't. It doesn't matter. I'm not gonna. It doesn't matter. Halloween ends 2022, starring Jamie Lee Curtis, Andy Mahat. How do you say her last name? Mahat Matajik. Matish. Oh, I have no idea. She follows no idea. me on uh, Instagram. Um, oh yeah, Andy Matajik. Matajik. Okay. James, Jude, Courtney, Rowan Campbell, Will Patton, Jesse C. Boyle, Michael Barbieri, Destiny Moore, and a number of others. Uh, directed by David Gordon Green, based on the characters of John Carpenter. And then there's like 35 other fucking people that are attached to the screenwriting on this. Deborah Hill's name's there because she she worked on the characters right. originally. Paul Brad Logan is, is is credited as a writer. Chris Bernier is credited as a writer. Danny McBride is, is, a, is a writer. And David Gordon Green is also a writer. Right, right. Did they did they bring in every writer that came up with the kid takes over the killer's uh, identity uh, writers for like Friday the Thirteenth and all that shit too? Uh, no, no, they probably they should deserve have. credit. They probably yeah. should have. Uh, so, guys, you may remember, you may not. I don't know. <clears throat> um, when we talked, we didn't do a full review of it. But when um, Halloween Kills came out last year, we did make mention of it on the show. Uh, mm. And in classic Bill fashion, I was just basically like, fuck this movie and fuck this series at this point. <clears throat> it is so far from what it was originally you know, brought out as that it's mm. just it's laughable. Now, me being a really big fan, and I know you're not necessarily as big a fan as, as, as I am, of the original mm. Halloween and the first three in the series – uh, you know, like it, it, it's been it's been really frustrating to see where the series is kind of gone and just how it's morphed into just ordinary run of the mill horror movie fodder. You know, yeah, it's uh, like Saw. You can you can you can use almost any slasher script and throw Myers into it. Yeah, it's really yeah. Or like you know, we did that. We talked a lot when we talked about Hellraiser about how so many of the series were just other movies with. Mm -hmm. Cenobites dropped into it. Like, yep. I feel like these Halloween movies, a lot of them are like that too. But four Saw and five, did the same thing. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't an original idea back when Saw was doing it either. So. No, four and five are <clears throat> interesting for their own little arc that they kind of go with. Part six, that if you can get your hands on that director's or the producer's cut of it, um, mm. is pretty good. Is pretty good. Um, then there's Halloween Resurrection which is the one with Busta Rhymes, which is garbage. Halloween H2O, listen, I know a lot of us thought it was good, but go back and revisit it now. It's essentially just Scream. <laughs> um, better than probably some of At those other ones. At the time, but, it was probably good. Well, because we were coming off the Busta Rhymes fronted Halloween or whatever it was. That is how you make a good movie. You have them make new Coke beforehand. Right, right. And then we got the Rob Zombie two flick flicks, which I still we you know, I got a text message that today from Eric from Bloody Good Hara, and he's like, Hey man, mm. I'm listening to you roast the monsters. He's like, I refuse to watch it, but I'm having way more fun listening to you bitch about it. Yeah. I can't stand yeah. what Zombie's done for many, many years now. And I think what his version of Halloween is just is, is bad. I just, I don't think it's good. I know there's people out there that love it. Um, I just don't, I don't, uh, I don't like it. I don't what well, my thing with his is I don't like how you had, how he try had to go in and give you the prequel stuff and explain yes. where everything came from. Everything yes. doesn't need an answer. I was going to say, I like zombies Myers when he's a fully active adult and he is just anger and violence. I was cool with that. I'm like, okay, good. This is a level we haven't seen Myers at, you know, in a long time. Like in the first two, he was a brutal killer. And then it falls into comedy territory almost. And so the, the early family stuff aside, um, 
I think I think he focused he, maybe he focused on the Myers character and how he was supposed to be and the rest of it all was just kind of yeah we'll do this mm. but and then his sequel yeah. he tried to like make like an art film but it just was so soulless and so forced that it didn't it just it yeah. didn't work it didn't work I I give him credit for sincerely trying something different even if he wasn't good at it doesn't mean I like fair. it that's fair that's fair so that brings us to the rebooted trilogy mm. Halloween 2018 I think is what what is when the first I think it was 18 yeah David Gordon Green one came out which followed directly in the steps of the first two films mm. uh, it was a direct continuation Jamie Lee Curtis was finally back uh, in 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 the Laurie Strode role, um, they threw away any type of canon that was created with anything post two, and even part of two. I think they didn't really factor it in. It's really more so just off, off the first flick. Um, mm. There's some, well, no, that's not true. There's some little things that come in there, but um, okay. Every canon is all the canon is thrown out for everything after the second flick. As it should be, if you're trying to tell a nice right, yeah. If you're story. not completely restarting, there you go. Uh, right, because you don't want to bring druids and cults into no, this stuff. Too, it's too just much, too man, much. Too much. So that Halloween, I thought, was decent. Yeah. It was decent. Um, yeah, he was uh, he was a force of nature. He was scary. He just walks around all silent. And as long as you live in Haddonfield, you're fucked. Yeah, Perfect. essentially. Yeah, essentially. Yeah. Uh, but then Halloween Kills came out in 2020. And yeah. I mean, this I I, I I I couldn't believe how bad it was, considering how good the first one had. I, I, the first one wasn't perfect by any sense of this imagination, but it was the best thing they had done with this with the series and the characters in a very long time. And I thought was yeah. leading us somewhere that was going to be really interesting. But then Halloween Kills mm -hmm. had no fucking direction in it. I really felt like they were trying to go with. um more of a lighthearted dream warriors feel than w what they actually achieved because there was a bunch of comedy stuff in there sort of but it, i don't know it just the tone didn't work and, you didn't even know the who the main characters were you right kept that's getting, uh, that's you, exactly what i was gonna get at okay the, continue it's laurie Michael and and Lindsay and Allison. to a, a, and Allison. a more of a more or less and <sighs> the characters I feel that should have really had a dog in this fight just didn't and we focused on weird people and weird situations and it just it almost it, it was it, it kind of felt like a hey I've always wanted to do this. And nobody said, but how does that serve the plot? You know what I mean? And so we get the couple in the original house, which if it was a, a even a slight horror comedy might have been acceptable, but it was jarringly out of place. And then once you get into it with the two of them, it's over <laughs> and none of it matters anymore. Right. <sighs> So that's how I feel about two. And I agree with you almost to a T there. Uh, I just my I got so frustrated because every time they bring a character in and they'd give you a little bit of story and you're like, all right, cool. This is this is our yeah. hero. This is where we're falling. All of a sudden they kill that person off and then they introduce yep. another random person. You know, whether it was um Anthony Michael Hall, the black couple, the friend that right. had been there, the kids. Uh, Lori, Lori's daughter, Lori's granddaughter. The um, yeah. they they take, they spend the first fifteen minutes telling the story of the police chief and his history, but then they just take that yeah. and throw that out the window. It was so frustrating, and it was yeah. like every time you start to be like, "All right, cool, this is what." And that's, I mean, let's be honest, slasher films. You need to have that final girl or that final character to care about and drive it. Now, I'm yeah. assuming Lori is supposed to still be that final girl, but you know what? She wasn't in the movie. For seventy five percent of the screen time, yeah. So, with Halloween ends, David Gordon Green and his crew attempt to remedy that. Jamie Lee Curtis is placed front and center in this film as your main character, yep. 
Uh, we are given a number of other characters. We have the we have Andy Metallic as the, as Allison, the granddaughter, the survivor of Halloween Kills, because Laurie's daughter was killed. Uh, we then also are introduced to um, uh, uh, Frank is still there, the police officer. Uh, there's some mm. local police officers. We're introduced to another character named what was the kid? The kid's name that um, accidentally killed the kid at the beginning was that uh, Corey? That was Corey, right? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. Uh, the film opens Halloween 2019. Uh, Corey is helping babysit for uh, some friends of the family that um, needed a babysitter last minute. Uh, the kid is a royal fucking prick mm. and locks Corey in the attic. And then Corey kicks open the door, but the kid's standing behind the door and he is launched over the railing down three flights of stairs, neck first into the ground and dies. Yeah, fuck that. Yeah. Because you know what? If I'm babysitting a kid and the kid has locked me into a room and it's almost time for the parents to come home, I'm just going to fucking wait there. Right, right. Because guess what? <laughs> They'll see what their shitty little fucking kid did and then I'm not at fault. Right. So Also, this is such a thin <laughs> premise to set this character up on. Agreed. Such bullshit. So we fast forward. It's two years later, three years later. Corey is now, uh, he was a promising student who was going to be an engineer. He was going to go to engineering school. And now his life has essentially just been been shit on because there was a big trial. He was found not guilty. He was found that it was an accident. Um, for whatever reason, the parents seemed to try to, to the mother especially, um, blamed him mm. said that he did it on purpose, which again, doesn't make any sense no she didn't see it happen so it's opinion right i mean but why are we here's here's the question here's the ultimate question why why are we focusing on this kid this movie is about laurie and michael who the fuck are these people Yeah, that's it. That's that's what I got. <laughs> yep. So uh, his life has been completely disheveled. And, you know, he's working at an auto body shop. He's no longer going to go to school and all of these things. We are reintroduced to Allison, the granddaughter of Lori. Uh, she's still working as a nurse at the hospital. Uh, but Lori Strode has now kind of come to grips with all the things that have happened to her life, her connection to Michael Myers. She's in the process of writing a book um, and is like okay all things considered everything that's happened um michael yeah. had disappeared but it'd been three or it'd been a number of years since anyone had seen or heard from him it was assumed that he was dead but as we know in every horror movie you can't make any assumptions on that um, right yeah because you know evil dies tonight or you know till we get tired or that. every night until yeah until the returns stop coming uh so she's doing okay um Corey's getting picked on by some kids. He's, you know, he's an easy target. There's these asshole high school kids that want him to buy beer for him. And he's like, yeah, I'm sorry. No, I'm not going to do that. So obviously they need to harass him and attempt to like kick his ass and stuff. Cause that's exactly. Yeah. But he's a work. fucking adult. Like leave. You're an adult. <laughs> what the fuck are you doing? Right. <laughs> right. I don't get harassed by high school kids. Not counting my own. I don't get harassed by by high school kids. Right. Like, what the fuck? Just walk away. Hey, buy us beer? Nah, sorry. I came out of a concert once, and a dude got up in my face, and he's like, hey, you got a cigarette? And I said, no, I don't smoke anywhere anywhere. Well, fuck you! <laughs> in my face. And I'm like, all right. And I just walked away. And I'm like, I hope he doesn't jump me or anything or stab me. So, <laughs> so hey, Lori why are you in the hospital? I quit smoking. <laughs> Man, I knew I should have just ruined my life. Um, oh, I picked the wrong day to stop sniffing glue. So Lori <laughs> runs into Corey at the gas station when he's being harassed by these kids. Oh my god, their names rhyme. What the fuck? Oh yeah, I wouldn't. Yeah, sorry. Go ahead. So all right, uh, and he's now got his. <laughs> he had cut his hand in the process because he broke a bottle with his hand. So she takes him to the hospital. Uh, so that Alice can meet him and essentially tries to set the two of them up. Yeah. Um, and then 
things just keep going. So, like, the two of them kind of start to get it, you know, get into each other. And they go to a Halloween party. And he runs into the mother of the uh, the child that died. And in what can only be, like, you know, like, the most awkward. Like, yeah. like there's no way for that meeting to go well. But what I don't understand is how neither of them just chose to, like, walk away. You know, like why mm. he didn't just like when she started going at him, he should have just left. Or I understand should've... why the mother wouldn't. Right, right, right. But he's just like she gets under his skin. She starts screaming and yelling at him and all that and all the stuff that you would expect. So he's basically now her. And then he gets he gets all over Allison because he's like, where were you? And she's like, what are you talking about? I was at the I was there. I was, you know, and she's like, why would you bring me here? Ah, and he like goes storming out of there mm. because that's how real life works. <laughs> Runs yeah. into the same kids again. They're uh, they're pissed at him because he, uh, him and Lori had slashed the tires on the car. Um, yeah, she's a terrible role model, by the way. Yeah, well, you know, I mean, how many times are you going to get get killed in a movie series before you just don't give a fuck anymore? <laughs> well, because she's like, oh, you're getting picked on? Here, here's a knife. All right. <laughs> anyway. Keep it. Like, what the fuck, lady? So... And again, of course, the only way that it, the things would obviously normally escalate, they get into a fight. The two, the two, there's four of them. There's two boys, two girls. The two girls are kind of very much like just like, hey, all right, enough, whatever. Mm. The two get the two boys beat the shit out of them. And then obviously, because you know, a knife to your car, uh, you're going to throw someone off of a bridge. Yeah, like that's obviously like that's where you're going to go with it. Just oh, yeah, fucking throw them off the bridge. So I mean, throw- literally, we're looking at a scene from it. At this point, right? Uh, yeah, the, I guess. Yeah, I guess. They're yeah. beating a kid up on a bridge. Nobody's helping him, and the only way for him to get away is to fall off the side. So he just gets thrown off the side. Yeah, well, he doesn't fall off the side. He they throw him off the side. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but it's very similar. This yeah. movie calls back to a lot of other stuff because it's written really lazy. I mean, um, even early in the beginning, what did they say? They think they said one of the movie's subtitles what and I forget subtitles? if it was resurrection and I was just waiting for somebody to mention H2O, you know, <laughs> Oh, I need some H2O. Like, could they have named every movie? I mean, I'm They're sure like, they could have got just like Halloween of the wi- two. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's the season of the witch. <laughs> Fuck off. Um, so he gets thrown off the thing. They're like, oh, is he dead? They're like, whatever. It doesn't fucking matter. Let's go. Um, and then he's he wakes up. Or no, he doesn't wake up. Didn't someone? There's the old, there's the old bum. That's the, the bum. fakeroo. Um, but doesn't Michael drag him into like the tunnel? And he wakes up in the tunnel? I can't remember. That's what it was. Got... He, we see someone He did get him. dragged in or did he? W- no, he woke. Oh, uh, wait. What is the order of stuff here? Because he has the altercation with the bum. That's afterwards. That's after he comes out of the tunnel. I think if I'm remembering correctly, someone drags him into the tunnel and he wakes up in the tunnel and he's like all freaked out. And there's that scene where he's looking around and Michael Myers is behind him and he grabs him by the throat, but he lets him go. Yeah. And that's the first time we see Michael. So let's just go it's in here and tell you. It's an hour into the movie. No, it's not. It's not. It's not. It's a half hour into the movie. I made a very specific, I made okay. a very specific okay. well, choice when I was looking and being like, all right, we're all right, getting pretty to, far into this and we have not seen Michael Myers yet. I think it was yeah. like 27 minutes or something like that. Okay. To be fair, then we don't see him again until the hour mark. Because I remember, like, oh, uh, saying to the kids, I'm like, hey, you think this Michael Myers is real, or do you think he's hallucinating, and he's just going to, like, take over as the new Michael Myers, because that's what this fucking stupid movie's going to do. Um, and and at that point, I'm like, I can't even be sure if if he really encountered him or not. Right. Right. Um, so that was, that was the big annoying part for me, is that, like... It's like he came across a ghost, which I know is what they were trying to do. But why are you trying to set up another serial killer in your movie about a serial killer? Mm -hmm. Like Jeffrey Dahmer's not about the BTK killer. (laughs) You know, it's just. Yeah. um, And we're not going to go through everything because it's brand new. We don't. And it 
honestly, it's not worth going through it point by point. But yeah, I don't really understand why this is the direction they decided to go with it. For the last one. For the final one, right? Yep. Yeah. So there's this whole thing with Corey and Michael and like, is Michael mentoring him? There's something dark inside of Corey that was brought to life after the trial and just kind of like all this weird back and forth. And then Lori sees something in, in Corey turned eyes. into Lori turned into, um, the fuck was the doctor's name? Pleasance, Donald Pleasance's character. Oh, Loomis. She turned, yeah, she turned into Loomis. I see it in his eyes because that's all Loomis was ever talking about. And no one at any point says, you sounding a little bit like Donald Pleasance there. You might want to yeah. calm it down, crazy lady. But, like, that's what they're going for. Yeah. She's now seeing Myers in everything. And that would have been great if she had been wrong a couple times from the beginning of the movie. Mm-hmm. Or how about this? You know you're making three of these? Set it up from the first one, Rise of Skywalker. <laughs> Just saying, that kind of shit pisses fans off. Oh, yeah. look, here's a new person. Corey Feldman or whoever. Yeah, I, I just, as I was watching it. Okay, so this is better than Halloween Kills. Yeah. But not like, not like a lot. <laughs> So not yeah yeah Halloween Kills is bad for r- the wrong reasons right and this yeah. is good following those same bad reasons it, it, it good is I don't know if I would say good not to get ahead of ourselves but like once things start to kind of get cooking in the movie and now Corey's mm. taking over as being a killer but Michael Myers is still there I like one thing that I actually really did like was that when Corey. <laughs> came back to Myers and was basically like, I want you to teach me. Mm. Like he was able to kind of beat the shit out of Michael Myers. Like you could see that Myers was older. Now he was weaker. Yeah. He wasn't as strong. He didn't bounce back as quick. He was still like a, like an inhuman, like monster, but mm. like you could see that the beatings and stuff and like through the years, it had taken a toll on him and he wasn't yeah, able to, this is old man logan <laughs> yeah yeah essentially that's, that's what this still is, yeah. like infinitely scary and going to fucking kill you yeah because like he still was, he was even yeah even as a senior citizen because that's what he is oh my god so We're that- reviewing a movie about a geriatric serial killer from the 70s <laughs> i know right um weird there was just a lot of weird decisions made in this man. Um, yeah. The like the, the the love story angle between him and Allison. And I like the Allison character and how like she doesn't really know her place anymore in Haddonfield. Mm-hmm. And she's questioning, you know, should she be there? Should she stay? Should she go? She has a very tumultuous relationship with the grandmother, Lori. Um, Lori just thinks she's doing the best for her. But like there's like a lot of like uncertainties and you know her and Corey are like maybe we should and then like Corey's like almost got the like the two-faced thing where like he's like yeah I love you and I need you and we should go and we should get out of here but I'm gonna go murder all these random people first like at first when he went after the people that like had wronged him I was like okay yeah acceptable within the bounds of this world yeah sure Okay. But like then the guy that ran the radio station, which first and foremost, can we like can we start making movies that have DJs that are on the air literally all of the fucking time? Yeah, Haddonfield isn't a big enough place to have um the number one home of rock in Illinois or where the fuck they are. With your boy Juicy no. Couture or whatever his name was on the air every single time they showed the station. Yeah, that's a the, 70s throwback, isn't it? It is, but like, how many movies do that? Like, where it's always like, what was it, Candyman 2, The Kingfish? He's like, oh, yeah. they're just, dude, more than one DJ works at a radio station. There was one I remember watching about um, somebody that was that had a pirate radio station out in the desert, and they were big on conspiracy theories, and they would just broadcast whenever. That's a different story, though. That's like that. But different. it was a lot, is what I'm saying. <laughs> So, but yeah, that's the closest I've seen. Yeah. I mean, 
WKRP in Cincinnati obviously did the best with the rotating DJs. Right, right. But so, you know what I mean? Anyway, so yeah. anyway, so then like the the fucking DJ gives him like shit, so he comes and kills the DJ. And like it's just like fucking Yeah, we're just killing people without any just idea to show anymore. that he's like a psycho or whatever. And then yeah, then Michael was... decides to get his shit together and join in with him. <sighs> Yeah. And it just it just it it completely falls apart, man. Like the good stuff that they set up at the front of it. I mean, like I was on board for like forty five minutes or so, and I was like, "All right, this is decent." Yeah. And then it just like they like it felt like they were like, "We need to have this out." Mm. We were gonna rewrite the second half of the script. <laughs> we don't really have any details. <laughs> Let's just go with what we have, and we'll kind of ad lib it on the run. Yeah, that's what it felt like to me. Like they didn't finish writing the script and they just kind of threw the ending together. Because like if this is really supposed to be the ending of Halloween and the ending of Michael Myers, and let's be honest, there'll be another film in a few years. Somebody else will start a new trilogy or whatever. Hopefully they'll just start it from scratch. That would be great. I honestly wish they would just let it die. Just let it go. Just let it go. Yeah, you're not going to. I mean, you can't. What else? What other story are you going to tell with this? That's going to be of any interest. Yeah, because he's not supernatural, so you can't really even expand out that. And far. when they tried but to make him supernatural, supernatural elements in this, like the 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 dead zone thing they had going between him when he when his hand touched him or whatever, mm. like what the fuck was that? There was no explanation of it. It was like fucking Chucky. It was like Chucky, where like the like he was able to like move his soul into him, or you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. No. I mean, I'm I'm all for show don't tell, but sometimes you got to tell. You got to explain it. That's what exposition is for. Sometimes you just have to. Right? Mm-hmm. So Yeah. I will say that I thought Jamie Lee Curtis did a really good job in this. I thought yeah, her character ending I think was good. Um I did like without saying exactly what happened. I did like how they finally finished off Michael to mm. do everything they could to make sure that this is it. It's over. It's done with. It's not going to happen again. Um, right. It's about as definitive an ending without getting ghosts and all that bullshit together uh, that you could possibly do, which I thought was pretty good. Um, yeah. Yeah. Reboot not counting, notwithstanding. Um, Nightmare on Elm Street also did it really well. Mm. The um, the um, new Nightmare, I think, was the perfect end. And this this one... The Laurie and Michael aspect of the story, perf- perfect ending. Mm. I loved it. Uh, yeah, yeah. There was they actually worked in one of my greatest like nightmare fears into the end of this, like the last gore scene. Yeah, yeah. Um, and 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 that was definitive. That is that that's there's your answer. <laughs> you know, <laughs> so. That part was all good, but I didn't really give a shit about watching a fake Jason Voorhees run around. You know? I, I, at least lay this character in, in in the first movie. Or the second. I would even have been a, been okay if it was this if, if he was introduced, you know, halfway through the second movie. Because then there's some history. We just we just get it all right here with this first one. With the, I mean, with this third one, and it's like you're doing this now. Why? Why couldn't Myers be out there and this other kid be out there for you know two one and a half movies, killing people, and then you don't know who's actually killing people. Mm. Yeah, it, you know, it's. I don't know. I'm just throwing shit off the top of my head here. So, I, I I'm. <sighs> There was no mystery to it. Not that no, there is in a lot of them. You know, but. and I think when when we when we talked about the monsters last week, and we talked about like the cult of Rob Zombie, and how there's Rob Zombie like super fans that are just gonna be apologists to whoever you know to whatever he does. Mm. And I feel like the Halloween series and the character of Michael Myers is kind of in that same boat, where like. I didn't really look at any IMDb reviews, but I'm willing to bet you there's going to be, it's going to be like 50, 50. There's going to be like 10 of tens and then one of tens. And there's not going to be a lot in the middle. I've seen from people that we both interact with. I have seen both sides of it. And honestly, I can see both opinions, 
but only one lines up with with mine. But you know, right. if, if you like it, I am not gonna say a goddamn thing about it because it's a well made movie. And if that's your favorite dude out there, dude is what I tried to say. <laughs> if that's your favorite guy, if that's your favorite guy, dude. I'm not gonna stop you. You know, great. You have something you like. It just, it just didn't feel like they planned out an ending. They did. They did for Myers. But, yeah, but not, but not the for rest the of two it. hours around that, like this would have been a nice hour and 30 hour and 40 minute tight story. It would have been great, but wasn't it like just over two hours? Yeah. Yeah. Can we and also that, get away? It was actually, I think an hour and 57 is what I think it was. Okay. Can we get away. And from that's why we have again, this kid. Too, yeah. So, all yeah. right. Well, All right, Chris, do you recommend and what is your grade for Halloween ends? I mean, it's it's supposed to be the last one. That's what I'm going with. I'm not I'm not going to pay attention to reboots and stuff uh, unless I'm forced to. Um so for the last one, I think I think you get a nice satisfying ending to Laurie and Michael's story. So in that respect, I will recommend it. Um It's it's not as good as the Hellraiser. Uh, on not Hulu. even on the not even on the same level. Not even close. No, no. I would say that this Halloween trilogy falls under, um, like that Chainsaw remake with Arlie Ermey. Uh, it's 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 not as good as that. <sighs> I wanted to like it, but like Myers is like just this guy. You know, he's just a guy and it's really hard to be afraid of just a guy, <coughs> especially when like, if you don't live in Haddonfield, you're fine. Like why the fuck does, don't the Strodes go on vacation in Norway in October and November, <laughs> right? Uh, it's called Halloween. He wears a Halloween mask. He kills people on Halloween. Fucking leave the state. Right. <laughs> Right? Yeah. They're not going to let him on an airplane wearing that mask. You're safe. Go to Belize or something. That's what I never understood. Fucking move all of your family out of there. If Laurie's not there, Myers isn't coming. That's my biggest fault with the whole, with, with the whole thing. All the characters. like Instead of going insane, crazy survivalist out in the woods... Fucking move someplace with a moat. You know? Move to LA where there's a shitload of people around all the time. Go somewhere else. It's that easy. Like, that's why I was never attacked by Jaws. Don't go in the ocean. Pretty easy. (laughs) I mean, the rules are there, right? Don't have sex. Don't do drugs. Don't fall asleep. That one's hard. But, like, he's localized to this tiny town in the Midwest. How shit are the cops? And what's just, the deal with airline food? Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's, it's pre-made. And it's just, no. Grade it. Grade it. I don't want to talk about it anymore. Grade it. C minus. All right. It's fine. All right. Um, so knowing that everyone that listens to the show is going to watch this regardless of what we think of it, uh, <laughs> I'm going to say that if you've if you've battled your way through the others, then, yeah, I'm going to recommend to watch it because it does give you a fitting ending. I, yeah. I was actually quite satisfied by, by Michael's ending at the at the at the conclusion. Mm. Um, but other than that, I didn't like the addition of the Corey character. I didn't feel like he I, I, I like I liked the idea that they had for it. I just think the execution of it was really not, not what they wanted it to be. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know what would have had more impact? Anything. If it was Lindsay's kid. Okay. All right. That's not right. tough, right? No, no, not at all. No, not at <laughs> all, actually. But uh, overall, it's not, it, it's, it's, it's not as good as the 2018. It's better than Halloween Kills. Uh, so it's, you know, 
in the in between in between the two Halloween kills was was was, was real bad. This at <laughs> least they tried to do something a little different with it. I think they failed pretty pretty hard with it. Mm. But there's some parts that were fine. Uh yeah. there was a there was a couple kills that I thought were were decent. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The part where he kills the DJ I thought was pretty good because like you've got the sound of the record skipping as he's smashing right. his face off the th- thing. I thought that was cool. But I mean, overall it just doesn't really offer you anything. It's kind of convoluted in the way it's presented, but they also don't give you any real information. Like yeah. the idea that they're going to spend all this time on this Corey character uh, but we're, you're not going to tell us what Michael's been doing for the last four years. Living in that storm drain, bothering right, like, that bum. Just like hanging out in there, wearing the mask, just like chilling. Like, you know you know what I mean? Like, yeah, there's got, yeah. you got to give me a little something. Like they talk about, oh, there hasn't been, you know, we haven't seen or heard of Myers in, in, you know, a number of years. So we're all now finally kind of moving on. Whatever. Uh, I think a C minus is a very fair grade for this borderline <laughs> D plus. Um, if you're a real hardcore fan of the series, you're probably going to like it more than someone that's not really invested in the Michael Myers character. Uh, the original Halloween is one of my favorite horror movies. I, I still really enjoy it. I really like it's the great. second one. Yeah. And I think season of the witch for a completely different, you know, direction is actually quite good too. Do you remember when everyone used to hate season of the witch? And then all of a yes. sudden, like, oh, like everyone was like, Oh, actually Halloween three is pretty fucking sick. That's because people watched it at yeah. that point. Right. Yeah. So, uh, so there you have it. That's Halloween ends available to watch on Peacock. It's also playing in theaters. Uh, I really like the, the releasing it um, in theaters and on a streaming service mm. on the same day. I'm a big fan of that. Yeah, I, I remember back when um, James Cameron was going to make Spider-Man and they were going to release it on HBO and in the theater at the same time. And theaters went nuts and were like, fuck you, we won't play it, blah, blah, blah. Now theaters are like, please, please give us something, <laughs> anything to keep us in business. Yeah, I like that, though. There was some – I read in an article – I don't know, some director that was going fucking ape shit about how they, they can't keep doing this. You can't keep trying to prop up your fridge. Your, your, he was like, you can't keep propping up your struggling streaming services by taking away. I think giving people the option is great. They just need to figure out a better way to compensate everyone what involved. What struggling streaming services are they talking about? Because I, I they're know. all doing pretty good, I think. I don't know. The only thing is finding a better way to compensate the talent and the directors and the crew and everyone that's involved because a lot of it used to be a lot of them make their money because they get points on the on the box office and yes if you're releasing it separately you're not going to get the box office pay that you would have and since there's none of that stuff is really but then that also just goes down to writing the proper contracts yeah but i mean halloween made 40 million yeah but i watched it at home the people wanted it to make 100 million though that's the thing like it's That's Halloween the- would never make a hundred million. No, no, I wouldn't have gone to see it in the theater anyway. No, no. <laughs> so, no, right. I wouldn't have. All right, that's Halloween ends. All right, here we go. Uh, twenty twenty two. Dario Argento has brought us a new flick. It is called Dark Glasses, Ochanali Nere. Uh, it is starring Ileana Pastorelli and, of course, Asia Argento. Uh, let's try to play a trailer again and see what happens. <laughs> Yeah! Era salita in camera di un nostro cliente. Prima di lei ci sono state tre vittime. Tutte prostitute. Che cosa si ricorda? Ha detto che è stata inseguita in macchina. La riabilitazione ti renderà autonoma. Che cosa vedi? Una ragazza che corre con le cuffie, un furgone bianco parcheggiato. Cosa? Un furgone bianco parcheggiato. 
L'unico sopravvissuto è il bambino di 10 anni che si trova in un istituto d'accoglienza. Posso aiutarti? È il furgone bianco! Hanno ammazzato due poliziotti davanti a casa tua. That's Italian for available exclusively on Shutter. <laughs> mm. uh, Dark Glass is the new the new flick from Dario Argento. Uh, back behind the the camera for the first time since uh, what dra- his shit Dracula remake. Um, oh, yeah. He also wrote the screenplay for this. Um, all right, so first and foremost, uh, we have spoken a lot mm. about Argento on this show over the years. Uh, Suspiria is one of my favorite, not even horror movies, just favorite movies ever. Um, Opera is killer. Deep Red is unfucking believable. He's got so like, I'd say seven or eight certified classics of the horror genre. Then things went wrong. He got older. He got older, What's, and I don't know what, what he found scary changed. That's fair. That's a fair point. That's um, why movies don't scare us anymore. But this That's is why the existential master. horror scares yeah. us now. <laughs> so we said earlier, can we stop with the master? I do believe Dario Argento to be a master of of the genre. Only once, because once great master, once great master. Yes, um, his early cat, you know, Cat and Nine Tales, Bird with the Crystal Plumage, Suspiria, Deep Red, certified pillars of like mm-hmm. of the genre. You know, essentially made the giallo like its own genre just based off of his work. Yeah. Uh, but he did make a lot of really, really, really bad films in the late nineties and the early two thousands. Mm-hmm. Uh, but dark glasses is kind of a, kind of a throwback. It's a giallo ish story <laughs> of Diane, who is a young woman who also happens to be a sex worker. Um, she, uh, gets into a car accident after being chased by a serial killer uh, who is killing the dumbest off fucking car accident. The dumbest fucking car accident I've ever seen. Explain why it's so dumb. <laughs> Please. Please. Enlighten. She's being chased by a perfectly painted white van. Okay. That this guy painted the night before, by the way, in his garage with the shitty... Uh, the scariest thing in this movie was the first layer of white paint he put on the black truck without primer. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so he's chasing her and she's freaking out and she comes up to an intersection and there's a car with an Asian family in it. And I only say that because you have the Asian kid later. Um, mm-hmm. What was his name? Um, It was so stereotypical, like Chin, almost insulting. Chin. There you Chin? go chin yes yes um hold on i'm resetting my brain from that name so the only reason she crashed into this car is because of bad editing because (laughs) the car appears to stop dead in its tracks in the middle of the intersection just in time for her to ride right over it and Still managed to have the people's faces be recognizable, which I found amazing because those faces should have been pulled right off their bodies. Yep. So the car with the killer in it kind of sits there, sees the accident. It's like, now my work here is done. I'm going to go home and play some Mario Brothers. (laughs) Also, um, we already know who the killer is by this point. Yeah, because it's the only other character. (laughs) As soon as the dude showed up, because you know it's a guy, because she's a sex worker, right? And they're not going to get so forward thinking that it would be a woman killer with the sex worker. Oh, no. No, it's the first dude you meet, because that's how these fucking movies work. It's either somebody you never meet, it's the last two minutes of the movie or it's the first fucking person you meet. Right. That's how it is. 
That's how these it's movies fine, go. Though. It's fine, though. So, but, you know, honestly, I want to say her attitude toward him. I mean, not not serial killer worthy, you know, revenge, but uh, some harsh language would have been nice because she was a dick. Yeah, she. Yeah. So obviously liberal use of the word prostitute in this film. Yes. Uh, I which is we don't really use that term anymore, right? It's sex workers. The, Not like anymore. The, yeah, like, we, we okay. yeah. But apparently in Italy, it's still prostitute. Sure. Um. So yeah. Well, so in she, Italy, so it's the, still okay to want to fuck your daughter. So you know where are? No we one said it was okay. No one ever said it was okay. Did people go to that movie and praise it? No. <laughs> okay, fair. That's fair. nobody praised that movie. I don't even think she did when she was done with it. Yeah, so yeah. anyway, so yeah, so she is a, a sex worker. She has people coming in and out of her out of her flat to you know to to, to work. Uh, she has one gentleman come in, uh, and when he when she meets him at the door, he's like, "Oh, my name is Matteo or whatever." Yeah, Matteo. Um, yeah, was it Matteo? Just yep. like the most generic Italian name again, Matteo. <laughs> you know, uh, from the chat, and she's like, "Oh, okay." So they start walking upstairs, and she's like utterly appalled, and it's like. <sighs> What is that smell? Yeah, because like he like, hasn't ever been there before. She's familiar with him. Like, well, no, she's not familiar with him. She doesn't know him. I thought he was a returning client. That that no, could have no, no, just no, no, been no. my mistake. Because he said his the first name was time? Mateo from the chat. Oh, all right, all right, all right. Like they were chatting right. online, or you know why uh, I didn't hear that? Because I turned to my kids and I said, "It's him." <laughs> And so she's like appalled is. by the smell and he goes, oh, uh, sorry, I've been at work all day. Yeah. And she's like, well, it's disgusting. You're going to need to you're going to need to 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 shower. And at this point, I'm still like, OK, she's being a little. A little um, dickish, like she could have yeah, said kind I, of a jerk I, about it. I require all of my clients to shower before. Which is completely, and here's the thing, I'm, I'm, I don't know, I don't frequent prostitutes. No, but, but I would want, I would, like, if I, I would was, think wash your like, dirty dick. Yeah, like, I know when I'm around my wife and there's a chance that we could be having some intimate time, I don't yeah. want to smell. So, like, Right, hold on, time, let I'm me like, go pee, floss, wash, take scrub, a, take three style. showers? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um. Because they don't so then, want balls being the uh, the dominant no, odor in the room. Nobody wants to be around anybody that smells, let alone intimate with somebody that smells. Yeah. So yeah, basically, you just if if you're gonna visit a woman of the night, take mm. a shower before you go. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. I mean, it's, it's um, courtesy. <laughs> well, you would think so, but so he takes it. So I think the issue was that. He takes the shower, but then he puts his dirty clothes back on, and she says to him, "She's like, what? <laughs> what are you doing?" Yeah, yeah. And then, and then he decides that this is the point where he's going to be an asshole. Calls her a slut. Calls her an ugly slut. Yeah. And then leaves. Yeah. So I don't, I don't get that. Hey, I use my shower for free. Waste my valuable prostitute time, <sighs> and then leave. Thanks. Yep. Yep. So then he bails out of there, and then we get to the point where, uh, the white van, she's coming out of um, she's coming out of a, a meeting with someone. Uh, oh, we forgot the most important part, which was after the accident, she's blind because of a of trauma to the back of her skull. We haven't. Well, we actually haven't gotten that far yet. I thought we talked about the accident. We had talked so. about the car. You wanted to talk about how the car crash was like. Stupid. Super staged. <laughs> it was as bad as the van blowing up at the end of the collector. Now, yeah, yeah. If you go back and look <laughs> at that van blowing up, yeah, the entire platform that model is set on visibly shakes. It's awesome. I actually do not give that movie any minuses because of that. Because for a second, I thought it was real. So good for that. Hope either way. Yeah. And it's funny. <laughs> so we've seen now the guy murder another prostitute. We know that there's he's he's killed a couple of people. Uh, yeah, the movie they, starts they, with a prostitute murder. Yeah, and we know that he drives a van. At first, it's a black van, and then, as you said earlier on, he paints the van white in the most unrealistic yeah. way possible. But hey, yeah, what are yeah. you gonna do? It's Italy. I know, I know. Yeah, 
things are different there, man. You can't judge. I know. So, I know. <laughs> so she's coming out of a meeting with someone and she feels like someone is following her. So she gets into her car and then he starts chasing her in the white van. Um, that's when the accident is caused. And as you said, she has now lost her sight because of trauma to the back of her head. They don't know if she's ever going to regain her sight. But at right. this point, she hit, she's now blind and cannot. It's see. possible she could if this hematoma or whatever it is she has back there uh, clears up. Yeah. So she is now forced to live her life in darkness. Henceforth, the dark glasses that give us the title of the film. Yeah. Um. And I thought it was interesting that she felt like she needed to put the glasses on. But if she can't see, like, that's the, the thing with, like, when you see blind people wearing dark glasses, mm-hmm. they wear them because it they makes don't everybody want... else uncomfortable. Exactly. Because they're not yeah. looking in the proper direction most of the time because their right. eyes don't work. So it's not like you're looking at someone when they're speaking. Because right. The eyes it doesn't don't matter. They don't have to look anywhere. Like, just right. watch Ray Charles play the piano or, or, or Stevie Wonder, and you'll see that they're just feeling the music. Whatever right. their body's doing is just like Joe Cocker singing like a weirdo. It's just that's what happens when you're really into the music. Right. So, so yeah. So we we learn that the um the father in the other car was killed instantly. The mother is in a coma, and the young son chin is in a is in a group home yeah uh, so diana goes she's she's released from the hospital uh asia argento plays um her uh her name is rita but she's basically the person that's assigned to help her acclimate to living without sight you know like teach her you know different things yep. give her a phone that's i want to say for... this this might have been the best acting i've seen her do i like asia argento so much more me too yeah when she's what <laughs> Yeah, I agree with you. What? Go ahead. <laughs> when she's not the focal point of your movie. I knew that's what you were going to say. Yeah. Yeah. She yeah. when she's, she's like the, Billy the Eichner. Cast. Yeah, she's really she she's a Billy Eichner like a little goes a long way. Right. Cuz she like, doesn't really have a yeah. whole lot to do in this and it works perfectly. Right. Also she's a totally straight-laced normal everyday character that is sort of tangentially involved in this whole thing but not really right so yeah. that's good so she becomes friends with diana she helps her she gives her like her cane and all these things uh and then diana feels really badly about the way things have gone and goes to the uh not the orphanage but the group home mm. to see chin and basically like basically apologize to him yeah. And give him a gift and be like, hey, listen, you know, this she takes upon herself like it's her fault. It's not her fault, obviously, but um and he kind of like rails back at her. Um and then the other kids make yeah. like she gives she gives him a gift and he's kind of just like, Fuck you, I don't want your gift. Yeah, don't throw so that switch he, on the ground, dude. Don't do that. I know. So he throws his Nintendo <laughs> switch that she gives him on the ground. And then yeah. one of the other kids is like, Sweet, mine, now I'm gonna play with right. my brothers. Yep. Um, and then Chin's like, no, I want it back. It's mine. And the kid is very much just like, you just, we just watched you throw it on the ground and say that yeah. you didn't want it. So yeah. I picked he, it up and took it. <laughs> he all but went, the fuck, dude? <laughs> Pretty so much. They that's get what in that like a little said. fight and, and yeah. Diana comes back and basically yells at the kids. And then, um, she got pretty far away before she went back. She did. Yeah. So she then she then leaves and then Chin ends up coming home with her. <laughs> like, yeah. Um, well, he ran away, right? Is that not what it was? He like, yeah, yeah. And like, uh, you can't keep track of all your kids. Come on. I don't know. So he ends up staying with her. Um, but now, so her and Rita have become friends. There's a point where Rita and her are outside on a bench. And she's like, tell me what you see. And she's like, oh, there's a person running. There's a white van over there. And she's like, wait, there's a white van over there? Yeah. And then she's like, oh, shit, this guy's following me still. Right. Uh, So. (laughs) Which I'm okay with. Like, that's that's it's an overreaction. But given her situation, that's fine. I get it. Exactly. Exactly. So needless to say, this movie is not. It must be terrifying knowing you can't see it. And everybody else can. So it's a lot like it follows with the, the killer could be coming right at you and you have no idea. 
Well, I was going to say a lot of the music in this was reminiscent of It Follows, too. I am glad um, you said that because, yeah, absolutely. Very reminiscent. Uh, I thought that I liked the score actually quite a bit. It wasn't mm. so much that it was like, oh, they're ripping it off. But you can no. definitely tell it was. But it's like, why is this familiar? It just doesn't have the wow, wow kind of. Right. That and it, it was that cleaner it sounding. It was more, dare I say, yeah. Italian sounding. Ooh. Uh <laughs> uh, I don't know what that was. I don't know. Um, that was the scariest thing about this movie. I thought though was the idea that like she is just you know getting adjusted to this new life, and there is somebody or something out there watching her, and she doesn't know if it's there, if it's not there, if she's alone, mm. if it's someone's with her. So like I thought that was a pretty effective, a pretty effective presentation in the way they kind of presented that, and then even with. The young boy staying with her like it was all it all it all kind of worked it all kind of worked yeah. and uh what argento did with this that was really smart first and foremost was he kept this short this is only about an hour and 25 minutes long uh and even less than that when you take out the credits at the end maybe about mm. an hour 20 uh because he doesn't weigh this story down with anything that it doesn't need we don't get convoluted backstory for the killer we don't get right. convoluted backstory for her. We don't get yeah. convoluted backstory on anything. It's just all presented as it's happening. Yep. Um, and I actually appreciated that because some of his other films that aren't hitting on the things is because he's just trying to explain too much stuff at, at one time with, you know, not enough um, interesting facts to come along with it. He that would very yeah. bare bones. Yeah, that's my number one complaint about Giallo and Italian film Polizia. All of that is the. I'm fine with if you want to have like a pulp fiction style thing, make sure it all comes together at the end. A lot of times that's the issue I have is like you're introduced to all these other characters and, and, and people and one out of 12 will play into the end of the movie. And it's like, what's the point? Like, is this just Halloween ends again? What's going on? And that's, that's <laughs> my biggest thing. It's like, I think when you do like say a knives out, you introduce your characters and then you can introduce other characters, but they shouldn't have, they shouldn't factor into the, 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 the murder case, like as a suspect, you know, in knives right, out, yeah. you have yeah. the people that were in the house and the family and that's it. And that's great because you learn who they all are, but in some Italian movies, like it, it, Sometimes somebody is being hunted by a serial killer and in the middle of the movie, they'll go on vacation, <laughs> which is fascinating to me. It used to piss me off, but I guess if you want to get away, that's, that's decent, but you know, that's a good way to get away, but you, you're going to go back. You should just move. Mm. Mm. Uh, but then there wouldn't be a movie as my wife. Is no, so I know. To I, hey, I'm right there with you, man. So, uh, needless to say, this killer is, st is still stalking her. Um, yeah. The police are looking for him. They can't seem to find him. Um, it's the so film nondescript. Is really, I know. The, the the police in this are terrible. But so there's a point where the police <laughs> show up at her for the house yeah. looking, for, looking for the young boy. Um, and I actually really, really liked this interaction where it's, it's a male and a female police officer or detectives. Mm. And they're like, listen, um, have you seen him? And she's like, no, I don't know what you're talking about. And they're like, hey, listen, if this kid ran away and you're harboring him, like you're going to be in, in trouble for it. And she's like, listen, right. he's not here. I don't know what you're talking about. And then the male police officer like forces his way into her house mm -hmm. and like. She loses it and is like, uh, what the fuck are you doing? And yeah. then the female police officer is like, yo, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> yeah. And he, and she's just like, you can't just go in there. And she's like, we'll come back with a warrant later. And she's like, yeah, we'll come back with a warrant. You can see whatever the hell you want. Right. Cause she has, she has the dog upstairs, which she, she yeah, has exactly. a German yeah, shepherd. She could, yeah. Yeah. So she's, yeah, she's got the seeing eye dog, which she calls down and the dog attacks the police officer. Right. Cause um, it's to protect her as well. So yes. Yes. Um, beautiful German Shepherd dog. Yeah. too. Beautiful dog. Yeah. Um, so they're like, all right, well, we'll come back later with a warrant. And so mm. now she's like, hey, listen, Chin, we got to get out of here. The police right. are looking for us. Right. And he's like, well, we can go. We can go to my house. Nobody's going to be there. And she's like, all right, sounds great. Let's go. 
Uh, so they go off to the to to the to the uh, apartment, and then the police do come back, but the serial killer there is uh, is already there mm. and manages to kill the two police officers, uh, and then take one of their phones and use it to find out where she is because Chin then calls the phone number yeah. of the police officer and yeah. gives away where they are because he's now he feels bad because he doesn't want Diana to get in trouble. For what right. for you know for him running away. So he calls thinking he's talking to the police officer and but it's actually the killer. And so then he shows up. Yeah. Um and things kind of play out from there. Uh there's a couple of really great scenes towards the end, um where they're like coming through the woods, uh, and the, the the killer's chasing them, and mm. like they're and she can't say and again, remember, she's blind, she can't see, she's being led by like a seven year old child. Yeah. Um and yeah. the scene where they go into the water. There's like a little like um like a creek or a river or a stream or something, and they're like, Oh, we'll go into the water and um we will he won't be able to follow us that way. But they <laughs> go into- as we know, he relies on smell and not sight. Right. <laughs> but so they go into the water and they get a little ways up river and they step into a snake nest. <laughs> yeah. It it yeah. was ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah, was, yeah, yeah, yeah. But also kind of effective at the same time. <laughs> Sadly, yes. <laughs> um and I'm assuming these snakes were not poisonous because at no point did they um they got, they each got bit like a bunch of times and yeah. like it's sea snakes that are like really, really poisonous, right? I don't know. I think it's like sea snakes that like if you get bit by a sea snake, you're like, you better fucking hope to God you're gonna like there's a hospital like right there. Oh, um, all I know is I they kind of look like eels <laughs> in this. But, it's just but so why ridiculous. this worked? Uh, I mean, in the ridiculousness of it, is they yeah. then had to double back because there were snakes everywhere, <laughs> so they yeah, had to double yeah. back, and that's yeah. how the fucking guy finds them, which I thought was pretty fucking good. And just the scenes of them like stumbling their way through the forest. Her and Chin get separated, and she's on her own now, and she's trying to find her way, and. It, it was surprisingly effective, I thought. Mm. Yeah, I'll give you that. Surprisingly yeah. effective. So, with with a lot of that said, before we before we grade, um, I don't know, Chris, where you kind of fall on this, but I will say that this is probably the best thing Argento's done in quite a long time. Uh, I it I would have a hard time arguing that. Um, it, but I'm I, not, I, it does not yeah. fall in the classics. Like this is no. not going to dethrone Suspiria or Deep Red at any point. No. But if you go and look back at his his um, let me get let me just get the, the, the stuff here. So it's been it's been ten years or so since Dracula 3D, and it's been wow. thirteen or fourteen since Giallo. Believe it or not, huh. uh, Mothers of Tears was two thousand and seven. Do you like Hitchcock's 2005, Car Player 2003? I would say this is probably the best thing he has done since Sleepless, Hmm. which was 2001. Um, And Sleepless was better than a few of the things that came before it. Okay. Um, Like Stendhal Syndrome was before that. Trauma was before that. Um, Opera really being the last truly good good thing that he did which was 1987 mm. but i would say that this is probably up there uh this is probably the best one two or three of his post opera releases okay dude still doesn't know how human anatomy works by the way no no that's true but i don't think at, at age 86 or whatever it is i don't think he's ever gonna well he's he was born in 1940 so that's mm. 60 70 80 yeah, 82 years old yeah, because when you get choked, uh, you don't immediately start coughing up blood. This just doesn't happen. Well, I think the idea with that was he was choking her with a a, a wire, mm-hmm. and he cut into her larynx. Yeah, but the blood wouldn't travel up; it would travel out. But if you think, just bear with. Yeah, me. go ahead. If he's if he's got that garrote around her neck mm-hmm. and he severs the arteries up there and then severs the larynx. And the blood starts to flow into the windpipe. She's gonna cough on it and then cough some of it up, right? 
Yeah, it should have bubbles. It should be right. really foamy. It yeah. definitely looked like she was bleeding it out, but like Yes. If we're gonna be if we're gonna cut or if we're gonna cut cut He had a there. talking severed head, so like, you know, <laughs> This is better, man. This is better, but not, but not, not much. It's still, it's still shocking to be shocking. It's not in the reality of the movie he's set. You know what I mean? Right, right, right. That bothered Um, me. Also, the other thing that really, really bothered me in this, like really bothered me was the loyalty of the dog. Mm. And how quickly it was loyal. Huh? And how quickly it was that loyal? No, how quickly it it wasn't. Oh, okay. Because the guy captures the dog and then apparently retrains it? Fuck you. That dog would have shredded him if it tried to take him. And if it saw her chained up, that dog would have gone ape shit. It wouldn't have sat for him. It's just that was not believable. I think it would have been better if the dog had to come in and just a, like pretended or like listen to him for a second and then attacked him. I just, I just, no. Yeah. Those dogs I, go no, through so you. You. much training that it's, it's impossible for me to believe someone could do that. Mm. So if it was the seventies, this was made in sure. But she has a smartphone that will speak out loud to her so we know what year this is. And I have never heard of a guide dog losing its shit on somebody. Right. Well, just so you know, this movie was actually written probably 20, 25 years ago, and they just never made it until now. Mm. Him and Franco, I think it was him and Farini, wrote it together. It was one of the scripts that they were working on getting made. And, you know, we're talking back around 2000 where, like, card player and that shit was coming out so okay. um this i mean this is i, I guess we can great <laughs> <laughs> all right chris uh do you recommend what is your grade for oh nere dark <laughs> glasses there were some parts of this that were that were okay however <laughs> You know who the killer is the first time you see him. I felt like the kid's name was just racist for some reason. Well, I mean, still calling him prostitute, so. Yeah. It's old man syndrome. It's old man syndrome. Yeah. I just, I, I, I wasn't, I'm not a fan of it. I, I, sometimes I will get excited for stuff that directors do directors that i like sometimes i will sometimes a lot of times though yeah not, not really no make a good movie <laughs> make a good movie show me you made a good movie and then um and then and then we're, we're, we're good uh everybody winds down at the end of their careers mm-hmm. he started in the 90s um but everybody does Every, everybody has a has a you know craven had his misses and Romero had a couple of hits. Um, <laughs> you know, that's just, that's just how it works. And I think a great example of that is someone uh, like Ridley Scott, who used to really make good movies, but then he started writing them and he's not good at that. Right. Um Right. <laughs> So well, I think I think it's interesting too, especially for the Italian directors that came from the seventies. Um, I know we say every time we talk about uh, Argento or, Mar- or Sergio Martino, um, we always talk about Lucio Fulci, and mm. he's another one that is put up on this pedestal. But like, if you really look at his filmography, there is way more bad things than there is good things. Yeah. Uh, so I think Argento had a much steadier run than a lot of the other Italian directors. Uh, but the fall off, mm. um, for his like you know mid two thousands, uh, you know output whether it be Giallo or um, uh, his version of Dracula. I mean, like yeah. those are arguably some of the worst horror movies from that time period. Like straight mm. up, like you're watching it and you're just like, this is this is there's nothing I can get out of this. You know, yeah. Even that's how talk, I felt like, about this. Yeah. 
uh, like we talked a lot last week, obviously about Rob Zombie. We had mentioned it earlier when we talked about Halloween and like apologists and stuff. Like I would consider myself an Argento apologist, hmm. but I can still say how bad that stuff is. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, I'm sorry. Did you grade it yet? No, no. I was going to say, as far as like the Rob Zombie stuff goes, like I, I'll like certain things, but I don't think I've liked an album he's put out since Hellbilly Two. And that's probably what fifteen years ago. Now? That's a long time. Yeah, I haven't like you know there was the one with Rat in the title. He is the one where we're all fucking on UFOs, and it's like, all right, I get it. You just you just you're embracing sleaze, and that's working for you. And I I have no problem with that. You've just I'm I'm just not along for the ride anymore, and that's cool, you know, mm-hmm. and that's fine. I think it's absolutely fine to walk away from something if it just doesn't line up with uh, with what you think. And maybe I would have liked uh, I would have liked all of the Italian directors more if I was if, if if I don't know if I saw them earlier. Maybe if I wasn't if I wasn't force feeding you them at age like 40, <laughs> 45 or whatever it was when we started watching them real quick. And then I'll give my grade. There's this whole big thing about shutter. Oh, we're going to do a, a blind, whatever surprise thing or, you know, whatever they called it. And I turn it on and I, and I'm looking and I'm like, Oh, this looks like crap. Okay. What is this? And I look it up and I find out that it's that uh, it's, it's dark glasses. And I go and I, and I look and I'm like, Oh shit, we're doing this in like two weeks. I know we're going to cover this movie. <laughs> I'm just going to start. And I stopped watching. Cause I'm like, I'm fine. If I have, if I have to watch this, I'll watch it when I have to, because I saw the part with her and chin arguing in the woods. And I'm like, fucking dead on. There you go. <sighs> No, this is this is this rates about as high as Halloween ends for me. So, I'm gonna just gonna go a little bit lower because this guy should know better. Uh, D plus, D plus. Okay, um, I infinitely, definitely enjoyed it more than you did, and I I I, I knew mm. when I watched it, I'm like, right, you knew Chris when you picked it. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, Chris isn't gonna completely hate this, but it's not something he's gonna be like super psyched about. Yeah. Now, as like a big fan of Italian horror, I actually. I actually thought that there was some stuff in this that he did that was that was pseudo Argento esque. Some of the okay. cinemat- cinematography I thought looked good. The look of Diana looked good. I mean, he made sure that she wore like you know like super red lipstick and like mm. she stuck out. Like she stuck out and popped out like a lot of like the characters from his earlier films. That's true. And it pretty much kind of kind of ends there though, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, but it is it is it is significantly better than like Trauma, the Card Player. Stenhall syndrome like it's mm. it's much better than those movies. Stenhall watched, was painful to watch. Yeah, this at no point was painful because he kept it short. Yeah. He didn't overdo anything. He didn't start trying to overload you with information or character arcs or any of that bullshit. Um it has a good score. It's shot pretty well. It's definitely on the cheap. There was mm. a few shots in this where I was like, hmm, I think that shot on a GoPro." Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. which, Hey, you can mix GoPro footage in. I'm not going to hate on it, but no. like you, you, you can tell, like be prepared to be like, Hey, somebody's going to call out the fact that you guys use, you guys used a GoPro on the shot. They so. did it. They did it. Uh, they called it out on the Hobbit during that, that river barrel run. People definitely noticed that. Yeah. You got to, you got to, Yeah. but either way, I think it is much better. Uh, I mean, we're never going to get another like classic Argento flick. The man's 82 years old. I don't expect him to do it. When I'm 82 years old, if we're still doing this show, God damn, it's not going to be nearly as good as it was 10 years ago. So <laughs> just kind of be ready for that. Uh, it's so a Fibonacci I, spiral of awfulness. Yes. This movie is thoroughly fine. Yeah. Thoroughly fine. I'm going to yeah. give it a straight C with a bit of apologist apologist attached to that, that I am a big Argento fan of his classics. And it was nice to see something that was better than what he's done for many years now. Mm. Um, but again, don't don't think that this is gonna you're gonna turn this on and you're like you're like yes fucking new Argento bro like right. put it on and be like all right not the worst thing I've ever seen <laughs> no it's definitely not the worst thing you will have ever seen no not even close no uh, did you like it more than Halloween though would you would like 
It's really a person, more just a person. Nah, opinion. see, Halloween is more of like a like like you know the characters, so you can just ease right into it and be like, I know what's going on. He's trying to kill her. She's trying to kill him. They live in Haddonfield. We're good. It's like that's it's more that's more of like a like a comfort sequel. This is new situation, new people, new things. So there's it's it's a different comparison. Okay, that makes sense. I think. That um, makes sense. But no, I enjoyed Halloween more. If, if we're gonna, that's fair. If we're gonna that say is that. fair. I did not. I I made fun of it too because I was actually yelling at the TV, making fun of it. So there was that. <laughs> Speaking so. of yelling at the TV and making fun of things, yeah, Joe is starting the <laughs> the Child's Play series. Uh, oh, let's yeah. see what he thought of part one. I can't imagine it helps. It holds up well. Well, hello, Bill. Hello, Chris, and hello, OTC Nation. It's your boy Joe here, and I do not have a witty rejoinder this week. Because, you know, Bill made me start the Child's Play series. Starting with, are you ready for this? Child's Play. Full disclosure, I have not seen a Chucky movie since I took my younger cousin to see Seed of Chucky in the theater. And that movie killed any and all interest I had in the subsequent films. I've heard that Curse of Chucky and Cult of Chucky are good, but if Bill hadn't set me down this path, I probably would have just stuck with the mildly condescending attitude of, hey... I'm glad you like it. Mm. Even before then, uh, I saw only, I think, the first couple, and my memory is telling me that I think I found them just okay, uh, but they also kind of came out when I was, like, in my early teens, so they probably just weren't nearly violent enough for me at that time. I don't know. That's fair. Still, it's been, like, 20-ish years since I've seen any of these, so let's hope that time and a softening attitude in my middle age <laughs> makes the next... Ugh, eight weeks, a little more, hey, <laughs> these movies were pretty great for their time versus, I don't know, a, a lot of these film series that are that are bad kind of blend into a shitty chop suey of boring and uninspired. <laughs> I'm looking at you, Leprechaun movies. But I rarely have anything better to do on a Sunday morning, so fuck it. It's not like Bill is making me watch like Hallmark made-for-TV movies, mm -hmm. so I guess it's all about perspective here. I would never do One that. thing I loved about the idea of this film was the inspiration from the My Buddy line of nearly life-sized dolls for boys and girls in the mm -hmm. mid-80s, mm -hmm. but also how this movie essentially killed that toy line. Like, to be fair, the toys were creepy as fuck to begin with, so they were already walking a pretty thin line. <laughs> Like we, we all already had That's the thought true. of what if one of these things became sentient? Yeah. Don Mancini just did the work for us in fleshing the story out and probably, probably cost some people their jobs at the other company in the same time. Mm -hmm. Dope. I think the real story here is one that we see all the time, but it never gets focused on. It's the story of how in the fuck can a single mom afford a pretty damn nice apartment in Chicago while working the jewelry counter at a department store? Right. That's how it used Chucky to be. starts stalking up with a knife. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ho ho hold on, sir. Ma'am, is this place rent controlled or something? Chucky has a phone cord and he's holding it like a garrote and he's going to choke you. Yeah, 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 yeah. One minute, notable character actor Brad Dorif. So you don't like, you don't deal crack on the side to pay for all of this? <laughs> what the fuck? But seriously, or whatever. Brad Dorif is a serial killer, the Lakeshore Strangler. Chris Sarandon is doing his best impression of a straight man who is presumably a cop, <laughs> but he's in plain clothes and never identifies himself as such. You're just left to assume. A True. nice little touch is that the serial killer's name is Charles Lee Ray. And the only time you hear all three of someone's names is when mm. they've been busted for being a serial killer or their mom is super serious mad at them. <laughs> Dorif yeah. gets all shot up and transfers his soul into a My Buddy doll. I, I mean, a good guy doll. Mm -hmm. Mercifully, they don't make us watch too much of the adventures of Single Mom and her sidekick, Latchkey Kid, <laughs> before Chucky starts doing, you know, the Chucky thing. The first kill is fucking precious. His babysitter is stalked around the apartment for a bit where, uh, before he whacks her in the face with a toy hammer, which sends her flying back about 15 feet, but still with enough momentum to send her flying out the window to plummet. Then about 10 stories onto a car below. Like it's a perfectly good death, but he whacks her between the eyes with a toy hammer 
And she literally like reels back like a solid dozen to 15 feet. <laughs> this was even less realistic than a dying man transferring his soul into a doll. Right. Still, right. Good for a laugh. So listen, I understand that this kid is like eight or nine, but even at that tender age, did we not all have a little bit more survival instinct than to let a talking doll convince us to skip school, hop on the L train, go to one of the worst neighborhoods in Chicago, a city notable for its bad neighborhoods, BT dubs, and just hang out near a big trash pile while our sentient doll friend goes to murder his old accomplice? <laughs> for fuck's sake this kid the one character i'm hoping gets disemboweled and you know they won't seriously though i'm not saying i'm just saying this kid is more annoying than that kid bob in house by the cemetery oh no come on. also Catherine hicks was straight up milfing around this movie eight years before milf was even a term Chucky finally comes alive and attacks her. Uh, and I actually really liked that they made us wait for Chucky to actually do Chucky shit. Yeah. It, it's like Jaws. You make them wait and they'll pop even harder when they see the bad guy. Mercifully, they take the kid away because they think he's crazy. So the rest of the movie is pretty much just Catherine Hicks either trying to convince Chris Sarandon that he's straight. Or I'm sorry. I mean that Chucky is alive. Or fighting with what I'm guessing is a child in a costume with a really good animatronic head. Mm. Chris Sarandon gets attacked in his car by Chucky in what was actually a really good scene, made funnier during the part where Chucky is under his seat, and Chris Sarandon is trying to keep the car under control while also trying not to get stabbed in the taint. <laughs> Relatable, it's probably really hard to negotiate lower Wacker Drive in Chicago in an <laughs> 85 Crown Vic going like 65 miles an hour and trying not to get a blade up into your grundle, mm. your fleshy fun patch, your bridge to Terabudia. Oh. Ah. Well, the most horrific thing in the movie just happened. Andy is locked in a room in the hospital and Chucky is coming after him. And this kid is wearing jeans that are so acid washed, you'd think they came out of my esophagus at 2 a.m. after I ate a bunch of tomatoes. Jesus. And on top of that, he's wearing a bright red and white vertical striped shirt over a somehow even brighter mustard yellow full turtleneck. I'm just saying, the real monster of this film was the wardrobe department. <laughs> They're going to, you know, they cat and mouse around the third act since Chucky found out uh, that the longer he spends in the doll, the more flesh and blood he becomes, yada, yada. Chucky goes to see his old voodoo pal who tells him that he can only transfer his soul into the first human body he revealed himself to, blah, 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 blah. I know in later movies um, that Chucky kind of straddles the line and becomes a quasi anti-hero, but we're in the OG and if Chucky is hunting down the one thing that was bad about the movie, that little boy, I'm already rooting for him like I used to root for the Detroit Lions before I regained my self-respect. Yeah. Chucky almost wins the day but gets set on fire for his troubles. Mind you, he's completely ablaze, running around screaming, and somehow doesn't set the rest of the apartment on fire. He finally gets all shot up, and they drag it out like anyone gives a fuck at this point. Here's the thing. The good, Brad Dorif. Yeah. And also the practical effects. They were pretty good here. The bad, that fucking kid. And that's <laughs> it. Child's Play has all the 80s horror stuff you like. Um, I don't normally hang my hat on nostalgia, but this movie really, really hit that part of my brain. Like between the cars, the clothes, the style of horror that they were presenting. Mm -hmm. It was all very late 80s and... Maybe I was just in the right mood, but it hit me just right. So Child's Play is going to get a straight B, borderline B+. I'll be back next week with Child's Play 2. Until then, be good, everyone. All right. I definitely remember the first couple being pretty enjoyable. Yeah. Um, I don't remember much past the third one and then Bride of Chucky. I, I think, think I stopped after two. Was the third one the military... School, I think so. Yeah. All right, then I stopped with the kid from the Cosby three. Show, right? It was the, the it was the, the I kid think from so. The Cosby yeah. Show. Um, I'm curious actually to hear Joe's thoughts on some on, on some of these because yeah, I never saw Cult the Chucky. I don't think I watched Cult the Chucky. I didn't watch C to Chucky. Um, so yeah, I'm looking forward to actually hearing some of it. Mm. So, all right, guys, Reverend Scott is back. Since we're done with Final Destination, I don't know what he's going to do with his time, but I'm sure we're going to find out. 
Hmm. And right now, uh, Sherry is associated with B movie stars. No, she's associated right? with Rob Zombie stars. So, like, she's not getting that right, but they level also, of experience. Right, but they also weren't in just Rob Zombie movies. Yeah, no, that's fair. So, either but way, I think I remember reading somewhere that's a choice she's made. And hey, if that's the choice you made, great. She's still in movies, and I'm not. So, well, you are in Survival of the well, Film no, Freaks. Well, no, I am. You're in the award-winning in... Survival of the Film Freaks. I am. Yeah. I am. But uh, <laughs> I'm not in crappy remakes of stuff. Not yet. I haven't gotten that far. <laughs> What? Yeah. Holy shit. Yeah. With Reverend Scott. Um uh my <sighs> I I fucking hated this movie. <laughs> hey there, Bill and Chris. This is Reverend Scott. Oh, you're not Spider-Man. Get out of here. Right. Well, now just hold on. Wait until you know what I'm here to do. Doing doing uh, the good Lord's work. Yes, indeed. Which means I'm giving you a brand new holy shit. How about you don't? Oh, please. <laughs> look into my eyes. You can trust me. This is going to be a good episode. Like, no, I don't believe you. You're <laughs> you. You look like you're having a really bad episode right now. Actually, you're right. I am. But we're going to keep on keeping on and talk about four movies today, but only one that I actually watched. Fuck you, no. Well, it's <sighs> too late, because this is pre-recorded and it already happened. Uh, all right, then. <laughs> Starting with two weeks ago, you covered a record of sweet murder and superstition. And I'm not going to lie, I barely remember these two movies. <laughs> Jesus, man. Uh, Come on. Well, I was busy moving to a new house last week, so all those days are kind of a blur. All I really recall is that you now hate Howard. So, uh, Howard, you done fucked up, dude. <laughs> or, or he did, he knew exactly what he was doing. Maybe. So now it's time to give out some grades, regardless if I remember them or not, because Lord knows remembering movies isn't necessary when judging your reviews. So a record of sweet murder gets a D minus, but the review gets a B plus. And superstition gets a D plus, and your review gets a B. How's that sound? I'm going to agree with you, because I don't remember. Okay, good. Let's move on, because last week you covered horror master Rob Zombie's The Monsters. Can we can we stop with the Rob Zombie horror master Rob Zombie? Can we stop with that? You covered horror remaker Rob Zombie's <laughs> The Monsters. And right from playing the trailer, I could already tell you were loving it. All right. All right. Rob, I do enjoy the theme. Yeah, the original theme from the original show. Fucking classic. Well, Bill, how about you tell us a little about horror retreader master Rob Zombie's The Monsters. For a guy that loves the monsters so much and worships them, I'm not sure if he ever watched one of the episodes. Okay, but did you like it? It's the best. It's the best. That's not bad. It's the best, man. <laughs> I'm glad you loved it, but I won't be watching it myself. I give it a D minus, and I give the review a B plus. So that just leaves one movie left from your boy Hulu, and that, of course, is Hellraiser. Let's listen to a trailer. And then, we have like, to show you. Yeah. Hi guys. How about we'll show the you the box? box. <laughs> you Speaking open the box, of... we came! <laughs> yep, yeah, there we go. Sorry if any of that was a spoiler. <laughs> oh, I thought we could lead up to that. Oh, okay, well. <laughs> give a little give a little tease. A little tease. So obviously after that trailer, I was pretty hyped for this flick already. But it's an even bigger deal for Bill, because movies like this are the only thing keeping him from abandoning his devotion to spooky season altogether. With nothing to look forward to, it doesn't, like, I don't, I don't care. <laughs> like, I don't care. So first of all, let's talk about the good things. 
one of them being something Bill said right at the start. Uh, this is right. a whole new version of Hellraiser. And honestly, the way that it's presented, you can look at it really any way that you want to. They don't box it in in any way, shape, or form. <laughs> box it in. Hey, <laughs> die. <laughs> yes, I appreciate this movie lives in the Hellraiser universe, but doesn't discredit, disavow, ruin, or ignore anything else that came before it. This is a well-made film, it looks amazing, and the acting was well done, the gore was handled very well and wasn't too sparse, and the makeup effects, oh brother, I haven't seen practical effects done this well since maybe The Void? Especially that one Cenobite that splits its own hands and forearms in half. And all of them have skin that's arranged like demonic clothing. They move slowly and methodically. And with the exception of the very strange voice trailer that I played, the voice of the priest, a.k.a. Pinhead, was exactly what I wanted to hear. Mm. I also appreciated that Pinhead was just following the rules, trying to finish what was started. She was like, you need to get me bodies for the box, bro, and I'll give you a prize when you're finished. Know that I'm not the bad guy. It seems that way, but right. know that this is going to be, you know, this is going to all work out and be okay. But of course, we know that that prize from a Cenobite is about as enjoyable as something you'd receive from the Wishmaster. We find yeah. that out firsthand from Void. Let me see what he received for his sensation prize. Yeah, man. Uh, oh. That leads us to a wonderful third act and a pretty satisfying conclusion as well. So I suppose that takes me to the bad. I guess what kind of bothered me, with the exception of some really cool scenes of the Cenobites warping reality, was that the second act really dragged for me. Mm. I remember pausing the movie after about 48 minutes in and realizing I wasn't even halfway through it yet. No. I feel like 20 minutes of this could have been just cut without sacrificing anything important, making it a tight hour and 40 minutes. I also wish they could have given you more time with the brother, so when the main character spends most of the movie wanting to get him back, you'd really start to question what decision she'd ultimately make at the end of the movie. Mm. Other than that, it's one of the best entries in the series by far, even better than Cowboy Chatterer and Inferno. And I give yeah. Hellraiser a B+. Plus. If you're a fan of the series, or even part of the series, you better check it out. Just stick with it, because it really picks up at the end. Yeah. And speaking of the end, it's about time I ended this segment. But make sure you all tune in to Outside the Cinema next week, when Bill seems a little confused when I show up at his house. Oh, the new reverend's coming, and he's going to live here with his family. <laughs> <laughs> what? what? <laughs> then I inform Bill that I'm taking over his bedroom. We'll see about that, man. But then I ultimately change my mind, and I disappoint <laughs> Bill when I tell him I'm leaving. I thought you loved me. You yeah. told me that you loved me. All that and so much more unappreciated love. But until then, peace and love, guys. Outside the cinema. Just a lot of complaining. Just inept planning. Doing, doing uh, the good Lord's work. <laughs> well, all right, then. Yeah. All right. So uh, next week on the show, we're going to do the new VHS movie, VHS oh, 99. When's uh, that out? Which comes out, it's, I think, the 20th. So it's, I think, for, was it Friday? Oh, okay. Okay, good. Do good. that. And then a lot of people told me to check out Deadstream, which is also available on Shutter. So oh, we'll do, that, we'll, we'll, the, the horror comedy, right? Yeah, yeah. So I've yeah, heard a okay. lot of good things about that. So we'll bang those two out next week. So VHS 9. So I'll, I'll Shutter show next week. Uh, okay. Okay. Cool. So That's thank you good. guys for joining us very much. Uh, as always, you can follow us on social media at OTC Bill and at OTC Industries and at Cthulhu. Uh, yep. Join our Facebook group. Uh, Facebook. Uh, just go to groups and search outside the cinema and, 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 and you'll be there. Yeah. It's that easy. It is that easy. Everyone have themselves a good week and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Yeah, bye. <laughs>